Hi everybody, this is Gardy Raymond for ConsequenceVideoDesigns.com and today I'm going to show you some basic rotoscoping techniques with the goal of putting some text in behind this basketball player here. So you can see I have this footage and when we scrub through it we can see the camera pans up a little bit and rotates to the left. So the goal is going to be to take this text, admittedly very basic text right now, but this text and make it like this stick it behind him. So as it plays through, the text stays behind him. So now real quick, let me show you the wrong way to do this so you know why not to do it that way. So let's drop this into a new comp. Let's create some text. Tim Frazier. This is Tim Frazier right here, if you're curious. Here's the text. And we, a lot of people would duplicate this and put it above and then try to rotoscope on this footage. So here, let's do that real quick. Let's grab the pen tool and draw a quick mask. That's wrong. This. Quick mask around Tim here. just going to go around his torso for right now. So okay, great. Say we got that right, it's right behind him. We'll set a mass path, a keyframe for the mass path. We'll hit shift F to bring up the mask feather. We'll set it to maybe say two pixels. Um, and then as it plays through, it's going to move. Okay, so let's go down a little bit and then let's double click on the mask and Rotate it a little bit so it fits in here, so it all kind of matches up again. Zoom in, V to uh, select some of these points, scoot them back in, select these points, move them back over where they need to be, and then go down a little bit more, double click the mask, bring it back to where it needs to be, rotate it some. Line it back up, hit enter, drag these out, and so on and so forth. So we go through the whole shot like this until we get to the end, and then hopefully we'll be in there. Uh, real quick, I like to use a mask color when I'm rotoscoping that you can see well against the background. You can see this is a light pink shade, and it doesn't work very well. So we click on this square right next to the mask and I'd select a color that I could see better, maybe a uh, bright green. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Okay, so say we went through and we set all these keyframes at our different intervals, but then when we go back in between, we're gonna see it drifts off, drifts off here, and it drifts off in here a little bit. And in this shot, it's not gonna be that much of a problem. I mean, you're still gonna run into issues because the camera motion's pretty smooth and, and Tim is not moving at all, so we're not getting that much of a, of a shift in the actual shape of the roto mask. But what's going to happen, especially when you have more complex shots, say he was waving his arms around or nodding his head up and down, kind of dancing side to side, what you're going to end up doing here is you're going to have to end up changing the mask path at every single frame as you go through because something's going to drift off. It drifted off right here a little bit. And drift it off up here a little bit. And even if most of them are all together, if one little thing is off, you're going to be able to tell. So let me go down a little bit. And okay, it's off again here. Anyway, you can do it this way. It's very time consuming. And a lot of times it's not, still not going to be completely accurate. Doing this shot frame by frame. Look at this, we have 210 frames in here. It's going to take you a long time to do that. So, zoom back out here. Let's show you the right way to do this. Or at least more time sensitive way to do this. Let's drop this into a new comp. Now we're going to use 
Mocha for After Effects by Imagineer Systems to track Tim. And then we're going to use a Luma mat to, to do the rotoscope rather than actually rotoscoping on this piece of footage. Uh, so we're going to click on this, go to animation, track in Mocha AE. On my computer, Mocha Pro is going to launch because that's what I have installed. But if you have After Effects CS5 or later, you're going to have Mocha for AE and it's going to pop up. Uh, it's going to have a few less options in here, but the steps are going to be the same. So first of all, this new project pops up. Frame range 0 to 211. We're going to track the whole thing. That's the correct frame rate. Go to advanced. Let's kick, click on this cache clip button here. Uh, yes, we want to overwrite that. It's going to cache all your original images up here, and that's going to make it so the video can play back in real time. So let's wait till everything caches here. And now that everything's cached in, we can play through it and it's going to play through in real time. Okay, stop that. Let's go back to the beginning and let's start. So if you're going to do rotoscoping, what you really, what you usually want to do is track everything that moves independently and what I mean by that is you want to look at the joints and places that will rotate on the body or on whatever it is you're tracking so we want to track Tim's torso here there you go click around draw a loose path and then for the last the last spot to get out of this mask right click and it'll close that up and let's label this chest track track all right and then we're also going to track his arms and his head now if he was moving his arms say he was waving his arms in the air we would want to track individually his upper arm his lower arm his hands and if it came down to it and the shot was detailed enough even his fingers since he keeps his arms straight and to his side in this shot we're just going to track around his arms here. This is left arm. And I know it's his right arm, but to me it's his left. And so label it however you're going to be able to remember which one is which. There we go. Right arm and let's track his face face shear is involved in this a little bit uh, perspective is not really going to be involved so we can just leave everything as it is right here and the great thing about mocha is you can set up as many tracks as you want and it'll track them all at the same time so since we have this gear icon in each one of these, that means it's going to track through. So let's hit track forward. And it's going to track forward here. And you're going to see it's going to do a really good job all by itself of tracking through this. Now I'll jump ahead till this is done so you don't have to watch it track all the way through. All right. Now we're done tracking through, so if we hit play, it'll play through in real time and we can watch the tracks as they go through. Everything's sticking pretty good to where it needs to be. You can see this left arm here drifts a little bit. Um, so that's not going to be the most accurate track here. But you can see the right arm sticks on really well, even though parts of it go off the screen. Uh, let's press X here to move around the screen and you can see that the track comes off the screen and back onto where we started it. Everything else, the chest stays good, his face stays really good. So let's stop it there. Let's go to the end. Now that we're at the end, there are two other things that I'm going to want to track in this shot for use later. Now sometimes you're going to have to go to a different frame in the shot other than the first frame 
to get a right to get a good piece of tracking data. For example, I want to track this jumbotron right here in the background, and it's beginning. We're missing a lot of it, and it's kind of on the edge. So let's go to the end here and draw my track path around the jumbotron. Right click to close it. And I'm going to track from the end going backwards. In Mocha, you can track going forwards, going backwards, whichever you want. Now, something I want to make sure I don't do is when I track backwards is retrack all this data from these other four tracks that I have. So I want to come over here to the layer controls and I want to uncheck these gears on all of these. So we can still see them, but it's not going to create new tracking data for it once we go through. Uh, I also want to track this light over here. Take it on, around this. Now I'm going to name this light. Let me name this Jumbotron. Now, let's track backwards. Okay, now we've gone through and we've tracked the Jumbotron and this light in the background here. And as we scrub through, we can see even though there's some little weird stuff going on the Jumbotron here, for example, see this stuff here flashing in and out. Mocha still does a great job chewing right through that. Okay, so now that we have all our data, let's go back to After Effects. Now if you have Mocha Pro, you can do your roto right in Mocha. You can um, adjust your tracks as you go through, set keyframes, export shape data and bring that into After Effects and use that as your roto mat. I don't believe you can do it in Mocha for AE and personally I just like doing my rotoscoping in After Effects. For me that's just it just works better. So that's what we're gonna do. Now let's take the chest track here because this is going to be our main one or the first one we're going to do export tracking data your export data window will pop up and in a mocha for ae you're going to have after effects corner pin data and after effects transform data in mocha pro you have a lot of other options but we want after effects transform data we're going to copy it to the clipboard we're going to command tab back to after effects we're going to create a new null object. I'm going to press Command Option Shift Y. It's going to create a new null object, or you can do Layer New Null Object. I'm going to name this null object. Hit Enter. Chest Tracker. I'm going to select it. I'm going to press Command V, and that's going to paste in all the tracking data. Super easy. Select this again. Press the U key for Uber frame, and it's going to show you all the keyframes that are just pasted in. First, select anchor point, so all of the keyframes are highlighted. Click on the stopwatch to get rid of them all. Right click, reset. There we go. And now you'll see your null object is stuck to the center point of the track that Mocha generated. So now that we have this tracking data in here, we're going to create a new solid, command Y. We're going to name it chest mat, hit enter. We're going to hit T to bring up the opacity and bring the opacity down to zero. Now let's zoom in, make sure we have our chest mat selected and draw. Let's go in one more so we're nice and close. Using the pen tool. Let's draw around the outside of Tim here. And let's just do that. And now we're just doing his chest here. There, there. We're actually going to go down a little bit. His chest and his upper legs are going to be the same in this particular shot. Like I said earlier, if he was dancing around or playing basketball, actually, whoops, we're gonna want you gonna want to track his legs and his torso separately. But in this case, it's gonna work. Also, 
the text we want to put in is going to be behind his chest, not behind his legs. So you got to remember, you only need to roto out the places that you need to. Oops. You don't want to have to make any more work for yourself. That is absolutely necessary. Because time is money, right? Okay. Now I'm holding down the space bar here to bring up the hand and clicking and dragging to move this around. Now I want to change my mask color so I can see it a little bit better. Let's do this green here. And let's hit F to bring up feather, two pixels, and then hit M again to bring up mask path, and we're going to set a keyframe here for the mask path. Now, what we want to do is parent this mat layer to the chest tracker. Now, before we even do anything else with all that tracking data, and drag through, see how close this mask is already without even setting any any keyframes well we have one keyframe set but that's because we're going to change it later don't want to forget to set your keyframe if you forget to set that first keyframe and you go through to here and then change your mask to here to change your mask it's not going to create any new keyframes and you've done all that work for nothing it will happen to you it still happens to me but pay attention to it so as we go through we'll see it sticks pretty well to Tim all the way through. So let's just go to the end here. Zoom in again a little bit. Let's double click the mask to move it around. Let's say here. Now a good way to do this is to take part of when you're moving this entire mask, line it up with a part that's pretty close. So I'm, for example, I'm using this section right here. Now that's still pretty much the same. Now I see we're off over here. But let's click on the anchor point and drag it over to this portion where it's good. And then we can resize the whole mask just dragging this bounding box. Now it doesn't get it perfect, but we'll drag a little bit and we'll get this in here. So that's good. And then let's select a few of these. We can do two of them here at once. And we can select these two and bring them in. We're going to select these. Now I have one selected. Now I'm holding down shift and you can click and drag a box. So you can select more than one at one time. Drag them up. This is still off a little bit. When you're adjusting these track points, you want to try to just bring them in and out like this direction towards or uh, to the edges of what you're trying to rotoscope around, moving them in this direction vertically along your object is going to make it a little bit more difficult. It just kind of uh, causes a little bit more drift to get incorporated into your track. So if you can just go in and out, oops, if you can just go in and out, that's a lot better. And the more you can move at one time, it also ends up working out a little bit better. Because if you're moving each point individually, then each point individually moves kind of, you know, obviously moves by itself. And it's going to also possibly incorporate a little bit more drift. So if you can move more at a time, do that first. Move as many as you can at one time and then go down to, to a fewer and a fewer until you have to move down one at a time. So now, oops, this mighty mouse just jumps around sometimes. Okay, so now we have a beginning keyframe where we did our first mask and our ending keyframe. Now with just two keyframes, zoom out here a little bit. Look how close we are to everything being in line just because we used that tracking data and applied it. So you know what? I'm going to say that's pretty good for right now. So now we want to do the rest. We want to do his face his and his arms. So create a new solid we're going to do left arm mat okay bring it down zoom in now these mats can overlap it's not going to cause any damage if 
we overlap in that. Overlapping is better than not. Now, see, we have this mask here, and it's gray, and we can't tell what it is. Let's make it uh, bright pink here. Click on that one, continue our mask. Here. Now, we don't have to go all the way down because our text is going to stay up here. Let's go through here, 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 here. And now we can overlap his chest here because this is already routed out and it's just going to be another white mat on top of a white mat. Um, let's go back to Mocha. Let's grab our left arm track. Let's export tracking data. Copy to clipboard. Come back. Command option, shift Y, new null object, hit, oops, if it's not selected, that will happen. Select that in the timeline, hit enter, left arm tracker. Let's paste all our data, U, get rid of the anchor point, right click, reset. Take the left arm mat, track to left, parent it to the left arm tracker. Now, left arm, how's it look? Now, there's a bit of drift there. Remember, we didn't get a clean track with that one. So it scales really weird. So what we'd probably want to do is go back and retrack this. This particular instance, I'm going to do it the not the best way. However, this will still work. Now we're dragging the, I've double clicked it, we're gonna drag the anchor point up to a place where it's still lined up. And whoops. And let's drag it out to, let's say there. Now, so this is in the right place, this is in the right place, but all this other stuff isn't. So what we can do is select all of these and do what I said earlier, move as many at one time as we can. So we'll drag this in. These two are now lined up. So let's shift click them to deselect them. And let's keep moving up the arm. Move that in, move this one in, move this one in, deselect it, drag it in until we're good to go. Deselect, deselect, move that one down, drag this one down. Same thing with all these, let's select them and drag in. Deselect them, move that one, deselect it, move this back out, deselect it, this out, deselect it, this back in. Okay. Oh, now you see, I just did what I said not to do, or I didn't set a keyframe for my mass path in the beginning. So now, I just did all that work for nothing. So now I set my keyframe, now I go back, and now it's way off again. So we're gonna go back, reset everything here, drag up my anchor point. Let's see what happened here. Now see, since we didn't get a clean track on this, we're gonna have a lot of drift, even through here. But it brings up a good issue. When you're adjusting your track, you're going to want to go to the point, once you have two keyframes set, go to the point in between the two key, keyframes where the, the track is most off. So, okay, see, it's in a good point there, it's in a good point here, but in between, that's probably the worst point right there, the most off it's going to be, and that's where you want to start adjusting from. There, here, these guys come out here, there, it's here, to there. And now 
water still a little bit off. Um, good there. Now if I had kept my set my original keyframe where it was supposed to be, if I had remembered to do that, this would be a little bit easier. But still not much. It, it really goes back to making sure you have a clean track to begin with. Alright, so let's stop futzing around with this arm. It's about accurate. It's not perfect. But it's just to show you what happens. If you get a bad track, you're going to get a lot of drift in here. You're going to get... And you're going to spend a lot of extra time doing this moving your mask around than you need to. Alright, so how about we wrote about his face now. Let's create a new solid face mat. Bring our opacity down, press T to bring that up, drag it down to zero. Command option shift Y for new null object. Hit enter, face tracker. Go back to Mocha, face, export tracking data, copy to clipboard. Let's go back, go back to the first frame of where we started our tracking. Paste your tracking data in. You Select the anchor point, do it, right click, reset, there we go. Now, one thing you'll see here, and then let's hide all this stuff. See, this is kind of in the way. You can turn off the tracker if you want. It's still going to work just the same, you just don't have to see it. Tracker, tracker. Now you see his face, his entire head actually, starts out of frame, the top of his head's up here, so. So doing a mask here isn't going to be the best place. Just like the track of the backboard earlier, we're going to want to go to a place where we can see his whole face and start our track there, or start our, our masking there. So make sure we're on the face mat. Let's zoom in a bit. Kim. Now let's start. And it does definitely help to be as close close to what you're trying to rotoscope out as possible. I've been not doing that exactly right. Now I'm going to incorporate his neck here in this one, even though realistically his neck and his face are going to be different tracks. His neck probably should be included in his chest track because they're on there are different planes and his face is actually closer to the camera than his neck is. And because his head rotates right in this area, if he was to turn it to the side, his neck is going to stay vertical mostly, but his head is going to rotate from side to side. So you'd really, a, a lot of times it's good to go around the chin and incorporate his neck in with his chest track, because his neck and his chest are going to move about the same way, whereas his head is going to be different. Also, if it's a really close shot of the face, <clears throat> you might even want to track his ears separately. So let's do this, and when you have uh, an object that kind of disappears in, into another color, uh, in this case his dark hair is going into the background here, but it could be you know a white t-shirt on a bright background, do your best to uh, guess where the edge of the object is. Because if you can't tell, somebody else isn't going to be able to tell either, as long as it's about the right shape of what it's supposed to be. Alright, so now we have that right. Let's hit F to give it a two pixel feather. Let's hit M to bring up the mask path and set our keyframe for the mask path. And now let's parent it to the face tracker and see how good it is. There's a little bit of drift there and a little bit of drift there. So let's fix this. This should be a lot easier to fix than his arm was. Let's do like we talked about before. Let's line up his ear here, a place where everything's kind of lined up, and then rotate around that. Let's scale it out. 
rotate a little bit more. There we go. Up a little bit. Hit enter. And then we'll have a little bit of tweaking here. Come on. A little bit of tweaking. A little bit of tweaking. Just a little bit. Now between these two keyframes, looks pretty good. We're getting a little bit, maybe right here. Make sure you click on, if you're just moving these, you want to click on the square, not accidentally on the Bezier handle. You're going to end up with that. Just Command-Z to undo it by it. If you clicked on that by accident. You can also click on these lines and drag the whole line in and out. However, if, you, if these points are Bezier points, that's going to happen. If they are not Bezier points, then the whole line is just going to move in and out, unfortunately. With this one, we have Bezier points, so that's going to get screwed up. Anyway, back real quick, let's go back to the beginning. And let's fix this one more time. Like that, let's use his ear again. Let's rotate it. Let's bring this in. Let's bring this down. You know his head's not that big. Like that. And now let's select his ear points here. Let's do all of these on this side here. And oops. And drag them down where they need to be. Drag that out. Drag this in. Drag this down. And now, easy as that, he got his head rotored. Now, what we're doing here, we have these matte layers turned off here. Well, we don't have them turned off, we have the opacity turned on. If we go back to opacity, bring it back up to 100. Let's see what we've done here. We've created these, this white outline of Tim. Now I'm going to skip doing his other arm here. You see the process. You just repeat the process with his arm, uh, with his legs, if his legs were moving, or anything else you need to do. Um, but so we do, we go through and we rotoscope everything that we need to do. Make sure all the all the edges are matched up. And see, let's see. See, we're getting a little bit of displacement here between, or not displacement, but an extra little spot here between the chest mat and the face mat. So let's uh, adjust that on the face mat. You want to make sure you don't have anything like that because if you have this here, whatever you're trying to put in the background is going to pop up right in this little hole, and that's going to kill the whole effect. So let's hit U again here to bring up all the keyframes. Let's say on this last keyframe, we bring this one down here, and let's go to this keyframe, and let's bring it down here, and let's go to this keyframe, and it looks like we're all good from there. And you can see here this uh, shoulder's a little bit off, so we got our chest mat, you, um, maybe bring these up a little bit. And this is why we do the rotoscoping with the transparency or the opacity turned down so we don't have this white mat in the way so we can actually see where our the edge of our mat needs to be. All right, so now all our, now our mats are done. Now what we're going to do is we are going to select all of these and we didn't need to be up there. And we are going to Command-Shift-C, 
pre-compose all of these into one comp. So we're going to call this Tim Frazier Matt. Hit enter. So now it's its own composition. And we're going to, now there's you know, two ways we could do this. We could either, let's create some text here. Let's do Tim Frazier. Drag it here. We could either put the mat on the text or we could put the mat on another layer of video. So if we're gonna do it on the text, we, you select the, you put the layer that you want to be matted out below the mat. So it's below here. We go to track mat. And if this isn't up, you can hit F4 and that toggles the controls over here. You can also toggle switches modes down here. F4 works. Make sure track mat is up. You go to track mat. And if you want to do it on, uh, essentially cut out this shape from the text, we do Luma mat, Luma inverted mat. And it automatically turns off the mat layer. And you'll see these two little icons here. This means this is being matted and this is the mat. Being matted is the mat. So now as we play through here, it's behind him, except for the right arm, which we didn't rotoscope out. So, great. The other option is if we were going to put a bunch, say we were going to put, you know, a whole bunch of text. Let's do, let's change this back to no track mat. So we're going to do a bunch of text. Let's do Tim Frazier, Penn State, and we'll change this to Penn State. We'll change this to blue text, and we're gonna go here, and we'll duplicate this one more time and do men's basketball, men's basketball. And let's bring this down a little bit. Oops, men's basketball. Scale it down a little bit. Make it, I don't know, green. Sure. So let's move everything up. Tim Frazier, Penn State, men's basketball. Now instead of doing a, a mat on all of these layers, we could just duplicate this video, bring it up to the top, and then we do the mat just on the video. So it's still going to cut out the same shape, which is around Tim. But instead of doing Luma inverted, we do a regular Luma mat. So now, if we solo this layer, you're going to see it's just Tim here. So play it through. Follows him. There he is. It's on solo it. So now it's in front of everything. So if you just have one item in the background, you could do it either way. If you have a whole bunch of stuff in the background, you're going to want to do it on the foreground piece of video. So there you go. Now real quick, You'll remember that I tracked this jumbotron in the background, and I also tracked a light over here. So what I want to do now, say I wanted to make this text kind of stick to this uh, to this jumbotron here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rotate this text a little bit so it's kind of in line with the jumbotron, and let's uh, scale it all down a little bit. And let's move it all so it's kind of behind, you know, right around the backboard and, and in line with it. So let's create a new null object, command option shift Y. We're going to name this Jumbotron Tracker. Go back to Mocha. Jumbotron, export tracking data, copy to clipboard. Go back to the beginning, paste it. Now, even though we started tracking the Jumbotron from the end, remember when we were in Mocha, we started our track of this from the end, it's still, you still want to make it at the first frame that it exists in the video clip. Uh, you, you wouldn't po paste the keyframe data onto the last frame here. You definitely want to go to the beginning of the clip, even if, even if the track of this stopped, you know, 
or started here, say we track backwards only to frame 41 rather than to frame 1, you'd still want to paste it on frame 41 or the very first uh, frame which it exists in the video going forward. I hope that makes sense. So back to After Effects, we pasted the data in, hit the U key again to expose all the keyframes, click to anchor point, turn it off, right click to reset, now it's stuck right there. Now we'll take all of this text and we'll parent it to the Jumbotron tracker, which we can turn off so it's not in the way. And now when we go through, whoops, actually remember what we did. Let's un undo that a few times. Now remember we rotated it so it was about in line with the, jumbo with the Jumbotron. So that was about there. So if you want that to happen, see, wherever you parent it to, whatever frame you parent it to on, it's going to move from there. So if we go to the beginning and we parent all these here, this is going to be the default position of this. And it's going to stick to the motion of it, but it's not you know, how we want it to be. So if we undo that and we go back to here, where it's about in the same, you know, it's parallel to the bottom, and we parent it there, then it's going to stay parallel to it. All right, so see how it's essentially stuck to the plane and, and the motion of the backboard, the rotation and the scale. It gets bigger, gets smaller, and there we go. Now, the last thing I tracked is this light over here. Now, this is only, let's uh, create a new null object. Command option, shift Y, create a new null, light tracker. Oops, C-K-E-R, tracker. Now, this is just a little something extra. Um, if you happen to have Optical Flares by Video Copilot installed, which is a great flare generation package, um, you know, No Light Factory was the original uh, flare generator, and it was great at the time. But now, compared to the stuff that uh, Andrew Kramer and the guys at Video Copilot came up with for Optical Flares, I, I think. You know, n nothing beats optical flares, especially for the price. Um, but I guarantee you, you've seen optical flares used in, in plenty of commercials. If you've seen the new Star Trek movies, uh, they're used in spades in the Star Trek movies. So let's uh, Command Y, create a new solid. And this solid we're going to make black. And we're going to call it Flare. Now I'm going to do Effect Video Copilot, Optical Flares. And this is going to pop up here. We're going to go to Options, and we're going to go to our Preset Browser. And let's go to uh, Lights. Is that what we're looking for? We want something that's kind of like a spotlight, like you would find in a stadium. So this main light is a good, good kind of spotlight. Um, or let's see what else we have real quick. That was a good one. Ah, eh, let's just keep this one for now. It's kind of like a spotlight. Okay. Just leave the default settings. Okay. Cool. I use this. This point right here is the position X, Y in optical flares. And what we want to do is we want to change our transfer mode to add. So we get rid of the black and we just have this flare here. Now we want to make these lights pop more. We want to pretend like there's all like there's all kinds of lights in here. And I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to do this one that I tracked. But so I track this light in here and I want it to be right there. So we go back to Mocha, we track the light, take the light tracking data, export tracking data, copy to clipboard. Let's go back. Light tracker, let's go with the beginning, paste it in. You Anchor point, click, reset, right click, reset. Here, let's go back to here, where it's, let's uh, turn this off real quick. Now uh, the light's in the right place right there. Now we're gonna do position, we're gonna bring up our posi just our position attributes here. And with a flare, we're gonna parent the XY position to the position 
of the light tracker. We don't, we're not going to parent the whole thing. If we parent the whole thing, what it does is it parents this whole solid layer that we have the effect applied to. So it works, but you see the problem is it gets cut off here because the, the solid is only the size that we created it at. It's, it's comp size. So when you parent the whole thing, it moves the whole layer. So you end up getting uh, the actual flare cut off here. So that's not going to work. So let's undo that. And let's option click on position XY here. So we bring this up. So position XY. And we're going to take the pick whip, pick whip from position XY and drag it down here to the position of the light tracker. And hit enter. So now it's just going to move the position X, Y here. So as we drag through, the position X, Y changes, but the position of this layer stays the same. Layer stays the same, this changes. Layer stays the same this changes. And if we want, we can put it down below this text. So it's behind the text. Um, and there's plenty of other stuff you can do with uh, optical flares. And this, if you wanted to set, say, let's see, optical flares is cool because you can do, sorry, I don't want to make this into an optical flares tutorial, but real quick, when you go to effect controls, we can set a foreground layer, uh, layer one here, and source layer Tim Frazier, layer seven here. This should do. Mm, might have to pre comp it for this to work. You can usually set a foreground layer and uh, the flare will brighten and darken as it passes be behind that layer. But anyway. You can see also with this XD cam footage, if you're curious, this this footage is XD cam. Uh, was shot with a Sony FS 700. Um, for some reason, it, it's cut off a little bit on the edges. It's a little bit smaller. I mean, the frame size is is the size that you see here, but you get this little black border, which is I still haven't figured out why. I've I've only been working with this footage for uh, six months or so, so I'm not quite sure why it does that. But the easy workaround is dump it into the whole comp into another comp. Let's name it Tim Frazier Final. And then simply scale it up, maybe 102. There we go. So now we lose that black, that black border. We have our text wrote it out. It's essentially stuck to the backboard here. And we added in the light. And the you could add in plenty of other lights the same way. Um, if you wanted to add in, you know, a light for each spot here. And finally, we have this we have this text essentially stuck to the motion of the jumbotron in the background. And you know, I would think if if we'd planned this shot from the beginning that we were going to composite in some text behind it, uh what I probably would have done in the shoot is we would have set up a C stand or a light stand somewhere between our talent and the background and uh, and add it in you know maybe put a uh, put some orange ping pong balls on them or something so that would set so where we would want the text to show up in the final roto so we could actually track the motion of those points rather than relying on the background here because um, the only limitation is here really you need to have a point that you can track in order to stick something to it. I mean, even if we did a, even if we did a, a camera track and, and um, recreated the camera motion, what that does, it'll still generate a whole bunch of null objects, and, which you're going to parent your objects to. And that's, you know, we're not going to have anything between our talent and the background. So just something else to keep in mind. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. Hopefully you learned a little something from this. Hopefully I didn't go off too much. And there you go. Thanks. This is Guardy Raymond again. Be sure to check out Consequence Video Designs for other tutorials and other information. Have a great day.